So let me explain how this works. Um, everybody, we're going to pick names out of this box here. Now, there was some uh, misunderstanding uh, on the website as to how this is all going to work. We're going to pick names out of here. and it, We usually do about 20 names. Uh, so it's completely random. But anyone here who does not get to pitch today, you can email me your pitch. Uh, and I will be standing over by the booksellers when this is all over. Email me your pitch, and I will critique it, because there was some confusion. But I don't want anyone to leave here unhappy. An unhappy author, it, it, it hurts my heart a little bit when there's an unhappy author in the world somewhere. So here's what happens. You get one minute to pitch your book. And at 50 seconds, I'm going to say you have 10 seconds left. And at one minute, you're going to be cut off cold. And I mean you will be cut off cold. All right? Then we will critique your pitch. And we're going to have two winners. One winner will get a half-hour consultation from the book doctors. And one winner will get a half-hour consultation from the uh, book enablers. So you get a doctor and an enabler. And that, that's pretty much San Francisco right there, isn't it? Um, so many people don't Im understand how important a, a pitch is. Uh, Ariel was an agent, has been an agent for 15 years, and she can speak to exactly how important a pitch is to you and your book. The thing about a pitch is that it follows you around from the moment you conceive of your book idea, and your friend says to you, you tell your friend, I have a book idea, and they say, so what is your book about? And you have to explain what your book is about. Then when it's time to submit your book, say, to an agent, you have to put your pitch in the query letter. And let's say you get an agent. The agent then has to pitch an editor at a publishing house. And then the editor has to take it to their editorial board and pitch the editorial board. And from there, it gets pitched to the marketing and publicity team and to the sales team. And then the sales team goes out and pitches it to bookstores. And then your book lands in bookstores, and a bookseller at the bookstore will pitch your book to someone coming in off the street looking for the particular book that you've written. So it follows you through the entire process, including the media and publicity that comes after your book is in stores. So when Terry Gross asks you, what is your book about, you need to have a very good answer to that question. So uh, there's a couple of pitfalls that we want to uh, just alert people of. If you're, if you're doing a narrative, it's very important not to do what we call a, a plot-heavy pitch. We have some people come up here and go, okay, my book's about this guy, he has a dog, he wakes up in the morning, they have cornflakes, and the dog yawns, and then, oh. You want to have themes and, and images are the best way, in my estimation, give us pictures, that's how the brain works. Um, it's also uh, incumbent upon you to do what we call an elevator pitch, which is kind of Hollywood ease for what your book is, because, uh, let's face it, agents, Editors, they're inundated with material. If you can describe your book in an exciting, quick way, it's going to help you a lot. For example, uh, one of my favorite elevator pitches is for a movie, Jaws in Outer Space. <laughs> Anyone know what that movie was? I'm Alien. Alien, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Alien uh, concept. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, uh, Catcher in the Rye with Asperger's, which I think is a great pitch. That book is The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, which is a fantastic book. So it's incumbent upon you to come up with a little short handle phrase that really captures what your book is by aligning it with other books that have been successful. Another thing that we have observed, don't tell us your book is funny or sad or romantic. Make us laugh. Make us cry. Make us feel romance in our heart. It's like those people who wear shirts that say sexy on them. Let me be the judge of that, okay? All right. Um, I think we are ready. All right. So let's pull out our first name from our... And our first name is Fred Zola. Do we have a Fred Zola in the house? 